Can you all hear me properly? Good evening. Can you all hear me properly? Good evening, everybody. Can you all hear me properly? Please just. Good evening. Can you all hear me? Yes, absolutely fine. Yes. And today we are going to have the NCRT discussion that is uh, the NCRT marking series part one of this chapter Animal Kingdom as you all know that we would be having two classes more on this chapter to complete this amazing chapter. Okay everyone. Yes, give me hearts on the screen and let's move. This is a lengthy chapter. So get ready with your NCRT so that we can rock today's session. Yes, one more subscriber needed to get into 500 people, 500 subscribers for our channel. It's 499 right now. Okay, do share the channel with your friends. Do share it with your friends so that soon with your active participation, we would soon reach five. Zero, zero. Good afternoon and good evening everybody and welcome to the NCRT marking series of Animal Kingdom part one. This is our amazing telegram group t.me slash neat underscore biopoint where daily session updates, regular discussion, polls and quizzes takes place. So don't forget to join our telegram group. Okay. Those who are watching the session right now, don't forget to hit the like button, do share it with your friends and subscribe the amazing platform for more updates on biology. Guys, please hit the chat box with the heart so that you can let me know whether you all can hear me properly or not. Please hit the chat box with the hearts. Come on. Yes. Thank you so much, guys. Thank you so much. So, let's move on to this chapter. Let's move on to the NCRT marking. Those who are brand new to the channel, don't forget to watch the previous lectures, okay? Don't forget to watch the previous lecture so that you will be able to know each and every topics in detail. Clear, everybody? So, let's move on. When you look around, you will observe different animals with different structures and forms. As over a million species of animals have been described till now. The need for classification becomes all the more important. The classification also helps in assigning. Okay, what is the advantage of classification? It helps in assigning a systematic position. It helps in assigning a systematic position. To the newly described species. To the newly described species. Clear? Next. What are the basis of classification? Important topic. In spite of the differences in the structure and form of different animals. There are some fundamental features common to various individuals. In relation to the level of organization. Arrangement of the cell. Body symmetry, nature of the coelom, pattern of digestive system, circulatory system, reproductive system. So there are different features that forms the basis of classification. That forms the basis of classification. Okay. Do you all have the NCRT book of this chapter? Do you all have the NCRTs in your hand or are you referring with the PDFs from Google? Tell me, have you all bought the new NCRTs or are you referring it from the Google? Yes. So those who are taking the PDF, please do write the important things wherever I am telling. And those who are having the NCRT, highlight these points in NCRT itself. Okay. If possible, those students can take a printout of the NCRT so that it would be more easy for you to refer. Okay. Very good, Jain. 
io everybody have their own books so these are the important points i'm highlighting the important points and i'm telling you the important things along with that first of all let's discuss something about the level of organization okay let's discuss something about the level of organization though almost all animalia are multicellular what do you mean by multicellular multicellular means more than one cell okay they have more than one cell so almost all the members of the mammalia are multicellular they do not exhibit the same pattern of cells for example in phylum porifera that is the sponges you will observe loose cell aggregates that is cellular level of organization that is cellular level of organization oh my god okay cellular level of organization in phylum porifera or these sponges some division of labor occur among the cells in coelenterata and tenophora the cells performing similar function join together to have tissues that is they will show tissue level of organization then members of platyhelminthes members of platyhelminthes and other hyraphyla exhibit organ level of organization okay okay and in annelida arthropoda and mollusk they will show organ system level of organization okay they will show organ system level of organization also yes so very very important okay these all are previous year neat mcq question all the things are previous year neat mcq question have you all bookmarked that have you all done that for me everybody have you all done that yes so so and there is a heavy wind okay strong winds that's why you are hearing some sounds in between don't worry about it i hope you all can hear my voice properly is it i hope you all can hear me properly right yes thank you om shankar so annelida arthropoda mollusk echinoderms and chordata they show organ system level of organization they show organ system level of organization okay a group of organ this is the structure guys cell which is actually the basic unit a group of cell that perform a similar function group together to form tissue a group of tissue together perform some similar function that forms the organs and a group of organ together perform same function that is organ system and a group of organ system together perform or together form an organism okay a group of organ system together forms an organism in our body also there are different or Uh, organ systems right can you name some of the organ systems on the chat box can you name some organ systems on the chat box come on i'll give you 10 seconds some organ systems just come on comment absolutely guys digestive system respiratory system excretory system reproductive system skeletal system all those things are different types of organ system and each system has their own specific function so organ system in different group of organisms exhibit different pattern for example the digestive system for example the digestive system in platyhelminthes has only a single opening to the outside of the body since they have only a single opening since they have only a single opening you will call them as incomplete digestive system okay so those 
type of digestive system in which only one opening is there you will call them as incomplete digestive system and only that one opening serves as both the mouth and the anus okay and then you can write the contrary that is a complete digestive system will have two openings a mouth and anus will be two different openings suppose this is a mouth suppose this is a mouth then the anus would be a at a different point okay this would be the anus then this is the structure of the complete digestive system this would be a structure for a complete digestive system clear everybody next is the types of circulatory system the circulatory system can be of two types that is the open type of circulatory system and the closed type of circulatory system so what do you mean by open type of circulatory system the blood is pumped out of the heart and the cells in the tissues directly bathed in blood okay that is suppose this is the heart okay guys just imagine suppose this is the heart they will pump blood directly to the body okay they will pump directly outside of the heart there is no specific blood vessel there is no vessel okay there is no specific vessel to carry their secretion or carry the blood so the all the organs and everything would be bathed in the blood exactly as contrary to that the closed type of circulatory system in which the blood is circulated through a series of vessel of varying diameters for example artery veins and capillary artery veins and capillary give me hearts on the screen if this is clear if up to here is it clear give me hearts on the screen everyone come on come on, everybody come on everyone yes thank you so much so let's discuss about the next topic that is the symmetry okay next topic is the symmetry okay guys tell me what are the three different types of symmetry what are the three different types of symmetry tell me on the chat box what are the three different types of symmetry absolutely bilateral radial and asymmetrical organism okay asymmetry asymmetry radial symmetry and the last one is bilateral symmetry okay so animals can be categorized on the basis of symmetry sponges are mostly asymmetrical organism that is any plane that passes through the center does not divide them into two equal halves very very important okay sponges okay sponges they are asymmetrical organism that is any plane that passes through the center does not divide them into two equal halves at the same time you can tell when any plane passing through the central axis of the body divides the organism into two identical halves then you will call them as the radial symmetry you will call them as the radial symmetry for example celenterata tenophora and echinoderms have this kind of a body plan animals like annelids arthropods etc their body can be divided into identical left and right halves in only one plane that is they are called bilateral symmetry is it clear is this both all these things clear guys just clarify each things along with me right now right here itself okay right now right here if you have any doubt just ask me those who are brand new also just if you have any doubt please ask me yes next is the diploblastic and triploblastic organization that is based on the germ layers animals in which 
the cells are arranged in two embryonic layer the cells are arranged in two embryonic layers that is an external ectoderm and the internal endoderm are called what diploblastic organism for example coelenterates okay for example the coelenterates look guys they have they have only an outer ectoderm okay this yellow is the ectoderm and the inner endoderm okay this is the ectoderm and this is the endoderm. They have these two layers. So then you will call such type of organism as diploblastic. Okay. So exactly like that you can the other way you can speak out is that an undifferentiated layer okay an undifferentiated layer mesoglia is present between the ectoderm and endoderm in case of diploblastic organism in case of diploblastic organism okay everyone give me hearts on the screen if each slide is clear if each slide is clear, give me hearts on the screen everyone Yes. If you have any doubt with any slides, so please do let me know. Okay. So guys, this is a very important diagram given in the NCRT. Okay. The first diagram is of the radial symmetry and the second one is the bilateral symmetry. The first one is the radial symmetry and the second one is the radial bilateral symmetry and radial symmetry. So please look at this diagram. This can be asked as DBQ diagram based questions for NEET exam. Okay, both these are NEET previous year question. Okay, both these are previous year questions too. Okay, I will provide the PDF of the session. Okay, everyone. Then this is the layers that shows the diploblastic and the triploblastic organism. The diploblastic and the triploblastic organism. Okay, the number A, the diagram number one shows diploblastic and diagram number two says to you is a triploblastic animal. Look, this is that this A is the diploblastic. They have the outer ectoderm, inner endoderm and they have a middle mesoderm. They have a middle mesoderm. At the same time, the B is a triploblastic animal. Then they'll show outer ectoderm inner endoderm and middle mesoderm this is the triploblastic organism give me hearts on the screen and let's move with the next part of the chapter give me hearts on the screen guys as each slides we complete please do let me know on the chat box whether you have understood each topics or not next those animals in which the developing embryo had a third germinal layer has a third germinal layer which is the mesoderm is present between the ectoderm and endoderm are called triploblastic animals that, that is from platyhelminthes to chordates all the organism from platyhelminthes to chordate you will call them as the triploblastic organism okay they have three layers, ectoderm, endoderm, and mesoderm is there. So you will call them as the triploblastic organism. Okay, and we will come to this diagram. We will come to this diagram. Okay, next is the zeolome. So, presence or absence of a cavity between the body wall and the gut is very important. The body cavity which is lined by mesoderm is called coelom. Okay. The body cavity which is lined by mesoderm is called coelom. Animals possessing a coelom. Animals that have a coelom are called zeolomates. For example, annelida, mollusk, arthropods and echinodermata, hemichordata and chordata. Okay. Is it clear? In some animals, the body cavity, in some animals, the body cavity is not lined by mesoderm. Instead, the mesoderm is present as scattered pouches. 
okay the mesoderm is present at scattered pouches in such a body cavity that possesses pseudo coelom is called pseudo coelomate the example is i shall mean this neat 2020 question okay neat 2020 question so at the same time the animals in which the body cavity is absent they are called as coelomate for example platy helminthus is it clear is it clear so let's discuss the diagram also which is a very important diagram so first diagram seen is the coelomate second one is the pseudo coelomate third one is the coelomate diagram so guys look this is the coelom this is the pseudo coelom okay they have scattered pouches they do not have a coelom their coelom is a false coelom present as scattered pouches in between the ectoderm and the endoderm layer then the third one is the acelomate guys this diagram can be asked for your board exams as well okay board exams and neat exams as well for board exam you need to draw the diagram for neat exam you will be asked diagram based question you will be given the diagram number a and you will be asked like which of the following indicates the diagram for a coelomate organism is it clear next is the segmentation next is the segmentation okay in some animals the body is externally and internally divided into segments with serial repetition of some organ for example in earthworm the body shows metameric segmentation and the phenomenon is known as metamerism my regular students would now let me know what all are the different phylum that show metamerism come on what are the three different phylum that show metameric segmentation which are the unique features No, Sadish, today you won't have any menti. At the end of the chapter, you would definitely have a large menti quiz. Okay, don't worry. If you guys promise me that you would be regular from next class onwards at the last of every session, every single session of every chapter, you would have the menti. Each lecture at the end, you would have a menti. If you promise like you would be regular for the class. Let me check. Can you give me that promise? Can you all promise me that you will all be regular for the class? We would be soon starting two chapters simultaneously about botany and uh, zoology. Okay. Yes, absolutely. This Annelida, Arthropoda and Mollusca. Okay. Guys, this chapter you will feel sleepy and all those things. I know that. Okay. Even I to pass through this situation when i do pass through the situation this chapter is a bit a bit difficult that's why you feel sleepy we don't have too much things to deserve. i think my voice is making Let me refresh the page so that the problem is all Can you all hear me now? Can you all hear me now?
Yes. Perfecto. In between, there will be some issue, but don't worry. We'll. So, segmentation. And for that, we're talking about like. I think right now itself also. One second. Can you all please wait for just 10 minutes? Uh, so not 10 minutes, just five minutes. Not five minutes is not will not take. Can you all just wait for just. I think now it's perfect. Yes, I think now it's perfect. Okay, so whenever the problem arises, I would read that. Okay, so guys, I know this chapter is a bit difficult and to buy that. Way fresh. I'll just wait for two minutes. hear me right now properly and clearly visible can you all hear me now yes so let me show the screen for you heavy rain okay heavily raining it's gonna rain that's why the network is not working properly but let's manage till our time gets end okay so guys even i too passed on through the situation so i know how your mindset would be as a beginner okay there is a lot of things in this chapter for you to buy heart guys but i'll give you promise that if you try and study this chapter perfectly you would be 500 percentage confident to answer any questions which comes from this chapter because no question is going to be coming from out of ncrt all those questions which is going to come from ncrt we would come across as we do so many questions we would do maximum questions we would be the toppers and masters of this chapter this is the only chapter which you feel like there are some more chapters like plant physiology respiration and all but you will find it entertaining okay we would just move on to your favorite chapters your 10th continuation chapters like digestion and absorption next chapter i would be taking okay next chapter i would be taking which one you need guys just tell me on the chat box guys just tell me on the chat box will you uh, do you need digestion and absorption do you need digestion and absorption or digestive system or you need morphology of flowering plants. Which one you need in morphology? Digestive system, whatever you have studied will be just refreshing all those things and a bit more higher concept and in morphology chapter. Morphology of flowering plants, I would be showing you the original flowers and leaves with examples. No, guys, as per you, because you are getting bored by different, different chapters. So for a change, I am asking you guys the permission. Which chapter? Just speak up. Okay, the majority decision, I think chapter 16, digestion and absorption, morphology, whatever. I think majority of you, yes, digestive system, majority of you are telling. So definitely, oh my God. Yeah, guys, next Amulsa would be starting your botany chapter. That is the second chapter, biological classification, where you'll be studying about bacteria, protista, fungi, virus, and all those things. So that is a botany chapter. So I'll start a zoology chapter. Okay. After digestion and absorption, we would come to the morphology. Don't worry. Okay. So let's back to the chapter. Give me hearts on the screen and let's move on to the continue with the chapters. Can we continue? Yes. So, notochord. Next is the notochord. 
Notochord is a mesodermally derived rod like structure formed on the dorsal side during embryonic development in some animals. Animals with a notochord, they are called chordates, and animals that do not have a notochord, you will call them as the not, uh, non chordates. For example, porifera to echinoderms, you will call them as the non chordates. Okay, so guys, this is a very, very important one. Okay, this is a very, very important one. Notochord is a mesodermally derived rod like structure. This is at least five to six times repeated question. Direct statement would be asked. Notochord is a dash derived rod like structure. Then they will be giving you ectodermal, endodermal, mesodermal. So you have to go with the answer mesodermal structures. Very, very important. Okay, now let's move on with the classification. So guys, this table would definitely help you study a lot of things. That is, animalia, they are multicellular organism, right? Guys, can you hear me? Guys, can you hear me? Yes. Okay. Okay. Yes. So mammalia, not mammalia, animalia, they are multicellular organism. So first let's discuss about the level of organization, right? So there can be two types that is cellular level of organization is shown by phylum porifera. What are their characters? They are mostly asymmetrical. They are acelomate organism. Whereas Sealantarata, what are the characteristics for sealantarata? They are acelomate organism, they have a radial symmetry, they have tissue system level of organization. Okay, Tenophora, what are the characters? Acelomates, radial symmetry and tissue level of organization. Platyhelminthes, acelomate, bilateral symmetry, organ system level of, or, sorry, organ level of organization. Ash in this pseudo -celomate. This is a very repeated question. Me 2020 question. Okay. So this way you have to learn each and everything. Okay, everybody. Next, let's discuss in detail about the different phylum. That is, first of all, let's discuss about phylum porifera. Porifera. Okay, can we move with the topics? Absolutely. Perfecto. So members of this phylum commonly known as the sponges, they are generally marine. They are asymmetrical animals. They are primitive multicellular animals and have a cellular level of organization. They have a water transport or water canal system. Can you please tell me on the chat box? What is the other system? What is the other water special system which is found in Echinodermata? What is the important or specialized water system which is present in Echinodermata? In here we will be studying water canal or water transport system. In Echinodermata, what is the specialized vascular system which we found? Absolutely. It is a water vascular system. Water vascular system. That can also be a cunning question, a very twisting question for your exam. They will ask you what a vascular system is a characteristic feature of. So you have to be very careful. Water canal system is in sponges. Water vascular is in Echinodermata. Very good, guys. Water enters the body through ostia, a central cavity called spongocele. Then it goes out through the osculum. This pathway is helpful in food gathering, respiratory exchange and removal of waste. Coanocytes or collar cells line the spongocele and the canal. Digestion is intracellular, body supported. This statement is very important. 
body is supported by a skeleton made up of spicules or sponge in fibers sexes are not separate that is a hermaphrodite what do you mean by hermaphrodite eggs and sperms are produced by the same individual that is a single organism would be there that produces both egg as well as the sperms sponges reproduces asexually by fragmentation and sexually by the formation of gamete fertilization is internal and development is indirect through a larval stage guys at this point i have to tell you an extra point okay i'll tell you some extra points over here that is the sponges the sponges they reproduce asexually through fragmentation they also shows internal spore formation okay they also shows internal spore formation which is called gemmules which is called gemmules clear gemmules g e m m u l e s okay g e m m u l e s gemmules they are the asexual spores in porifera in phylum porifera okay everyone yes so please take it down it can be asked for an exam so these are the common example which is a cycon u spongia and spongilla cycon u spongia and spongilla so guys you have to write these things also cycon common name is scypha scypha second one is spongilla second one is spongilla what is the other term or the to common term for spongilla spongilla is a fresh water sponge fresh water sponge so guys we have discussed over here they are generally marine right we have discussed a point over here they are generally marine so this is an exception that is spongilla is a fresh water sponge exactly the next one is the u spongia that is a common bath sponge okay the sponge this sponge is used by humans or for bathing so they are the bath sponges one more important example not in the ncrt please take it down two other examples first one is euplectella euplectella venus flower basket these are all extra information which can be previous year question which are previous year questions okay number 1 it is euplectella venus flower basket second one is hyalonema hyalonema it is called grass rope sponge guys these can be asked as match the following question for need 2020 there were a lot of match the the following question so please please take it down okay guys please take it down down
Can you all hear me now? Can you all hear me now? Yes. So have you all taken down the last points which I tell you? The last points, Euplectilla, Venus flower basket, Hyalonema, glass rope sponge. Have you all taken it down? Can we move it? Yes. Next is the Sycon, Skypha, Spongilla, Freshwater Sponge, U Spongia, Bath Sponge. Next is the phylum Celenterata. Okay, next is the phylum Celenterata or it is called Nidaria. They are aquatic, mostly marine, sessile or free swimming, radially symmetrical. The term Nidaria is derived from due to the presence of a particular kind of cells in their body, which is the Nidoblast. Guys, this diagram is very important. This is a diagram for Medusae, Aurelia. This is a diagram for Adamsia, that is the polyp. Okay, please do mark it in the NCRT. So, the phylum is called Nidaria due to the presence of Nidoblast or Nidocyte, which contain the stinging capsules or nematocyst. Where are these cells present? They are present on the tentacles and the body. Nidoblasts are used for anchorage, defense, and the capture of prey. Nidarians exhibit tissue level of organization. They are diploblastic. They have a central gastrovascular cavity with a single opening mouth on the hypostome. They, are, they show extracellular and intracellular digestion. For example, corals and all, they have a skeleton composed of calcium carbonate. They show a skeleton made up of calcium carbonate. Yes, Satish, very good. You have taken the screenshot. Good. Sessile means what? Sessile means what? They are attached. Okay. Guys, sessile means these organisms are attached to a particular substrate. For example, in case of hydra and all, they cannot move from one place to another. They are attached to a point, through, uh, to a rock or something. They may be attached. Okay. That is what you will call them as the sessile. Hypostome is the large opening. Let me check whether you have the diagram. One second. Yes. This opening is the hypostome. The large gastrovascular cavity has an opening near to the mouth. Okay. Hypostome. An opening near the mouth. You will call them as the hypostome. Digestion is extracellular and intracellular. Then certain organisms like the corals, they show an exoskeleton which is made up of calcium carbonate. Nidarians exhibit two basic forms that is polyp and medusae. Polyp is sessile cylindrical form like Ad Ademsia and Hydra. Whereas the medusae is umbrella shaped free swimming like Aurelia and jellyfish. How many of you have seen jellyfish? How many of you have seen jellyfish? Mostly you will see white color and all you will definitely see. Yes. You will not observe just exactly like what you see in the diagram but very beautiful to see. Okay, just like a plastic cover it appears. Okay, it will be just like floating. I have seen, uh, um, I have two also seen when I visited a temple once. Uh, in uh, near to that, I found a lot of, a lot of, that was the first time when I saw that. Okay, it's very beautiful to see. Okay, whenever if you get chances to visit such kinds uh, where you can have some marine exhibition, marine organism exhibition and all, please do go for that. Okay, after this COVID virus and everything just gets down. You will definitely have all these things in different parts. So please, whenever you get a chance, not now, or whenever you get a chance, you must go visit all these things. These are all different beautiful things to explore. 
just like some plastic covers floating on the surface we would see okay so those nidarians exhibit alternation of generation alternation of generation is called metagenesis polyp produces medusae asexually and medusae produces polyp sexually and their example is obelia so guys next i am telling you some important thing examples physalia portuguese man of war adamsia sea anemone penetula sea pen gorgonia sea fan meantrina brain coral these are some examples which you have to get by hearted okay you have to by heart yes sure you have to learn all these examples these all are previous year. this each term is previous year question if uh, when i'll i'll definitely show you the previous year questions of the chapters so at that time when you refer you will learn okay you will see all these so guys the better and the best thing that you can do is to write and study right write and study just write it two or three times and study okay then only you will remember these things otherwise very difficult next is the phylum tenophora okay phylum tenophora tenophora they are commonly known as sea walnuts or comb jellies exclusively marine radially symmetrical diploblastic tissue level of organization their body bears eight external rows of ciliated comb plates which helps in locomotion digestion is both extracellular and intracellular bioluminescence by what is bioluminescence a property of a living organism to exhibit light it is well marked in tenophora sexes are not separate reproduction takes place only by sexual means fertilization is external with indirect development the tenophora also you can clearly visible at the night that is after 9 pm after 10 pm in the beach in the near the seashore and all you will definitely observe the tenophora like you would be thinking like what's happening in the sea is there any light or something it's actually the light which is emitted by the tenophora that is the examples the common example is the pleurobrachia and tenoplana generally you will observe these things generally you will observe them in the blue color okay you will observe them in the blue color generally you will like lights are appearing from the sea okay so this is a very easy phylum you can have a look at that okay is there any doubt you can ask me okay next is phylum platyhelminthes they are dorso ventrally flat and body that is why they are called flatworms they are mostly endoparasites found in animals including humans they are bilaterally symmetrical triploblastic acelomate animal with organ level of organization hooks and suckers are present in parasitic form specialized cells called flame cells helps in osmoregulation and excretion okay specialized cells called the flame cells which helps in osmoregulation and excretion fertilization is internal development is through many larval stages some members like planaria possess regeneration capacity example is stenia solium fasciola which is the liver fluke is it clear is it clear hearts on the screen everyone come on yes so let's move with the next one so this is an example for pleurobrachia which is the tenophora so what are the common names of tenophora you will call them as sea walnuts you will call them as sea walnuts you will call them as comb jellies okay comb jellies also you can call them as sea gooseberry
see gooseberry okay this is the example for tapeworm diagram for tapeworm and liver fluke all diagrams in ncrt can be asked for your exam okay for cbsc students for cbsc students how many of you are opting for cbsc how many of you are opting for cbsc yes for cbsc students all these diagrams you have to draw in your practical record for state syllabus students of state board students you have to draw all ncrt diagrams almost all the ncrt diagrams of animal kingdom in your class 12th class 12th record okay so maintain this time in your study so that when your school gives you some record works you can spend those time on your record okay because you have external practicals for your class 12th okay it's not like 10 they won't be giving you simply they won't be giving you any marks it is purely based on your merit okay so be ready to draw all these diagrams on your records okay for your board exam these won't be asked they would give you a diagram of tapeworm and they would ask you like to which of the following phylum will it belongs okay they won't ask you to draw the structure of tapeworm they won't be asking okay next is phylum ash helminthes they are circular in cross section hence the name roundworms they may be free living aquatic terrestrial or parasitic in plants and animals they show organ system level of organization they show bilateral symmetry triploblastic organism pseudo coelomate animals one of the important and unique feature elementary canal is complete elementary canal oh my god elementary canal is complete with a well developed muscular pharynx an excretory tube removes the body waste from the body cavity through the excretory pore they are dioecious organism that is males and females are distinct often females are longer than the males development is direct or indirect the examples they are very important ascaris round worm vulture area filarial worm elephantiasis you might have seen in the images and all elephantiasis inflammation of the legs to that of an elephant ankylostoma hookworm okay and guys here you have to learn an important point that is the excretory organ yes nematoda they are also called nematoda the excretory organ in phylum ash helminthes not mentioned in the ncrt that is the rennet cells okay they are called rennet cells the excretory cell which is present in ash helminthes is the rennet cell till now this has not been asked for any exams but can be okay anyway we have to be completely prepared we have to write all the questions so guys this is the diagram for a male this is a diagram for a female you will observe cbsc students unfortunately this year you may not see all these things instead you will have all these things virtually only but in your laboratory if it was an offline classes definitely they will give you the specimen of this male and female male and female ascaris put in a formalin solution you will see all these tapeworm formalin birds animals all the specimens will be there in your laboratory okay next is the phylum annelida okay next is the phylum annelida in your ninth standard you have all these things some schools your teachers might have shown you yes om shankar yes phylum annelida they may be aquatic they may be marine or fresh water terrestrial free living or sometimes parasitic organ system level of organization bilateral symmetry triploblastic metamerically segmented so metamerism is first observed in 
where it is observed in analyta is a clear abstract wonder have you liked the session everyone have you hit the like button everybody they are coelomate animals their body is marked into segments and metameres and hence the name analyta very very important point the very very important point they possess longitudinal and circular muscles which helps in locomotion okay aquatic organisms like nereids possess lateral appendages named as parapodia which helps in swimming then nephridia it is the health excretory organ present in earthworm it is the earthworm it is a excretory organ which is present in earthworm that is helps in osmoregulation and excretion one of the most important statement is they possess paired ganglia connected by lateral nerves to a double ventral nerve cord nereus is an aquatic form is dioecious earthworm and leeches are monoecious reproduction is by sexual means nereus ferritima earthworm and hirudinaria blood sucking leech are examples of phylum annelida are examples of phylum annelida okay guys ganglia means a group of nerves okay a group of nerves grouped together to form as a bundle it is called it is called what ganglia this is a diagram the diagram number a is the nearest diagram number b is the hirudin area what is the common name for hirudin area it is the leech okay leech is actually monoecious nearest is actually dioecious that is a very important question next is phylum arthropoda next is phylum arthropoda it is the largest phylum it is a largest phylum which includes insect over two third of all the named species on earth are coming under arthropoda they have an organ system level of organization bilateral symmetry triploblastic segmented coelomate animals very very important point the body of arthropods is covered by chitinous exoskeleton their body is divided into head thorax and abdomen they have jointed appendages okay their respiratory structure is gills book gills book lungs and tracheal system circulatory system is open sensory organs like antennae eyes which may be compound or simple statoses or balancing organs are present excretion takes place by malpighian tubules okay they are dioecious internal fertilization oviparous the examples are very important some of the economically important insects are apis indica honey bee bombex muri which is a silkworm lassifer which is the lac insect what are the different vectors that comes under mosquitoes that is anopheles mosquito culex mosquito aedes mosquito gregarious pest locusta living fossil lumilus all these things we have discussed okay all these things all these things we have discussed in detail in our lecture is there any doubt over here is there any doubt is there any doubt okay perfect perfect moving on next this is the diagram which is the example which can be asked for neat exam okay what is the diagram number a indicates it is locusta which is the gregarious pest second one is the butterfly scorpion prawn all these things malpighian tubule here you have to study only the term malpighian tubule okay what is actually malpighian tubule malpighian tubule are the organ of excretion okay malpighian tubule is actually the organ of excretion in phylum arthropoda why i told you you have to study the term only is because in chapter number 7 you have to study in detail about cockroach cockroach is an insect 
cockroach is an insect so cockroach coming under phylum arthropoda there you will study in detail about the digestive system respiratory system excretory system reproductive system and everything about the cockroach here you have to understand that malpighian tubules are organs of excretion in phylum arthropoda is it clear abstract wonder is it clear yes next is phylum mollusca phylum mollusca yes phylum mollusca they are the second largest animal phylum they are terrestrial or aquatic marine or freshwater having an organ system level of organization bilateral symmetry triploblastic organism coelomate very important they have a calcareous shell unsegmented body with a distinct head muscular foot and visceral hump guys about detail with the explained diagram i have told you about the head muscular foot and visceral hump in lecture number 7 in detail okay so those who have not watched about phylum mollusca please go to the, our youtube playlist session and watch lecture okay about phylum mollusca you will be clear about what is head muscular foot and the visceral hump okay they have respiratory and excretory function the anterior head region have sensory tentacle very important point the mouth contains file like rasping organ which is called radula okay which is called radula is it clear give me hearts on the screen everybody if it's clear if it's clear only give me hearts on the screen come on up to here phylum mollusca is the ncert highlight have you understood Okay, sure, Satish. We'll complete a mint. We should take a minty. Okay, definitely we'll take a minty. Yes. Let's move on to the next one. That is the examples of phylum mollusca. That is pila is an example for phylum mollusca. This is the pila, which is the apple snail. It is given in the NCERT. We will come across right now. Octopus. What is octopus? It is devil fish. each each example is important each example is important okay pila apple snail pink teda pearl oyster sepia cuttle fish loligo squid octopus devil fish aplysia sea hare dentalium tusk shell cateopleura chitin all the examples are important okay all these examples are important it's better to highlight it like this right all examples are important so please take a sheet of paper write all the examples of this chapter okay write all the examples of this chapter and study next is echinodermata they have an endoskeleton made up of calcareous ossicles echinodermata spiny skinned body they are all marine with organ system level of organization the adult echinoderms are radially symmetrical but larvae are bilateral symmetry previous year any question bookmark they show triploblastic level of organization coelomate animal digestive system is complete with mouth on the lower side anus on the upper dorsal side of the body the most important feature is the presence of water vascular system which helps in locomotion capture and transport of food and respiration example is also very important asterius starfish echinus sea urchin antidon sea lily cucuminaria sea cucumber ophira brittle star guys they would give you one column they'll divide the box like this they would give you different different things like common in column number 1 column number 2 they would be giving they would be giving asterias echinus antidon cucuminaria ophira then here they would be giving you different other names starfish 
C Archen, C Lily, C Cucumber, Brittle Star. Then they'll ask you to match. Okay, they'll ask you to match the following. These are all trends which are observed in the NEET exam. So you have to write and study. It is only way. Am I right? Is it the only way? Write, 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 study. Okay, write it three or five or ten times and study. So these are the example Asteriasis and Ophiris. Okay, these are the diagrams. It can be asked for the exam. Next is hemichordata. Hemichordata have a rudimentary structure in the cola region, which is known as the stomochord, a structure that is similar to notochord. The phylum consists of a small group of worm-like marine animals with organ system level of organization, bilateral symmetry, triploblastic, coelomate, cylindrical body composed of an anterior proboscis, collar and a long trunk. Open type of circulatory system. This is very important point. Excretory organ is proboscis gland. Example, balanoglossus and sacoglossus. Example is balanoglossus and sacoglossus. So up to here, we are marking in today's class, we have phylum chordata remaining for the next class, which we would discuss in the part two of this chapter. So guys, this is the balanoglossus. You have to read the NCRT today itself. Do the questions today itself and be prepared. Okay, be up to date guys. Okay. Guys, are you all there in our telegram group? Are you all there in our telegram group? Are you all there in our telegram group for getting the updates? Yes. Okay. So guys, I think by May 8th or something, right? Your living world written tests have been scheduled. Is it guys? By May 8th, I think. I don't remember that. Okay, so please do watch the NCRT marking and the lectures of Living World. Read the NCRT thoroughly. Be prepared for the written test. Okay, I'll be sharing you the PDF of the question. You have to write the answers very perfectly and you have to send to me as PDF. Okay, we would be correcting your paper and would be giving you the corrected paper. My 10th standard students would be knowing. I am waiting for your final results on June 10th, right? June 10th or 20th. I am waiting for your amazing result. I am quite sure we would have definitely acquired 20, 25 to 30 people scoring above 95. I am quite sure about it. 30, 35 people would definitely be there above scoring above 95 percentage. Because your school results I have seen, it's very amazing and perfect. Some of your school results you have shared with me. So you have about this phylum chordata remaining, which we would be discussing. We haven't thought about this also, about the fishes and all. So there would be one more NCRT marking, two more detailed lectures. Okay, guys. So that's all for today. Baba, guys. See you in the next class with an amazing session or, okay, with an amazing session. Bye-bye. See you in the next class. Bye.